so i am on controller i'm going to be going through these settings and i'm going to be going a little bit in depth i'm going to be talking about certain things i'm going to explain to you why i like this setting or why i have this certain setting on or off and i'm gonna try my best to show you obviously i'm gonna show you every setting i have and show you the best things and kind of explain to you so you have an understanding why i use some of these things so display mode full screen 100p you want that on refresh rate obviously you always want to make sure you have the highest hertz you can put your monitor on this is a 240 hertz monitor so i got that on gameplay v-sync disabled many v-sync disabled um so this is an interesting nvidia reflex low latency so i've tested this i've read up on this i know some players use this and i used to have it disabled when i first made the video and this obviously helps to a certain extent i'm not sure how much this really helps like i've had it on i've had it on boosted and it doesn't like feel like there's really a big difference but i have it on because it's supposed to help and i'm sure it does in some form or way it's my maybe super minimal and very like small but like it helps so i do have it on boosted i think normal or boosted is fine i don't when i play on normal and i switch to boosted i really don't feel much of a difference but it says like boosted is like the best so therefore i just keep it on boosted so you definitely want to have it on normal or boosted render resolution 1920 by 1080 this is important obviously most of the time you want to have it on 1920 by 1080 even if your monitor is like it can automatically be like i don't know i don't even know the numbers to be honest but it could be higher than this the reason it's good to have a lower the higher you go usually the higher f you, or the more your fps will drop because it has to render those amazing and better quality so usually 1920 by 1080 you want to have this display resolution same thing aspect uh ratio automatic um i do like to dabble some colorblind modes i've been going on and off so you can if you were wondering how to change like your your arrow and all this stuff that's in the colorblind mode in this section here uh, but i'm still testing some things out for the field of view we're going to be rocking 100 now this is also another interesting topic pros used i would say between 90 to 100 now if you're a submachine gun player uh most subs do use around 100 that's like a better and a more favorable fov most now ARs run 90 to like 95 FOV because obviously you're like a little bit more zoomed in. If you aim in, you know, it's easier to see people. And as an AR, you want to be able to beam those kids. So if you're like, like I said, I would say stick somewhere between 90 to 100. I mean, you could do 105. I, I played on 105 for a little bit, but like it's just too high. It's just not worth it, especially competing at the highest level. Um, I play on affected. Most pros play on affected. I think some ARs tried independent and used independent, but I think it's maybe a couple. Um, affected is just a wave, honestly. It feels so nice and it throws you off when you have a high field of view and you play on independent, it feels so weird and it like kind of throws you off. So, I mean, you can maybe get used to it, but that's what I like. I like playing affected. Brightness, I mean, this is very, it has a lot of variables. It has like, what's the brightness on your monitor? What's the brightness in your settings? let you know what's the brightness here you know it's a lot of variables to this honestly i don't even know i can't even see the you know it says not visible like i'm not even i don't know i don't know what's wrong with that setting but the brightness for me is fine right now um you could turn this on if you want to have like less frames in your menu like you're not like overriding your computer or like making it work too hard for no reason but i don't really care too much i just have not unlimited now this is the important stuff the details and textures so for texture quality i have it on low model quality um medium obviously um you can uh, as a competitor and again as trying to have the person who's trying to have the most fps quality is not really important to me obviously you want to have a lot of these settings lower so i can get the most fps i can but sometimes you have to keep things you know you don't want to put lowest and low because then it looks really bad and you know sometimes it's hard to see the figures and stuff on the map so i have it on low um medium 4k is disabled special effects quality obviously medium reflection disabled like you really don't need that i mean it makes the game probably look cooler object view distance high um disabled low low so you can see i have a lot of lows uh dynamic shadows i have it on all so this is actually a very important setting that i disabled at the start of the game because i completely forgot that this is a thing but obviously there's shadows in this game and there are certain parts on the map where it has a light so your your body if you run past it or run near it your shadow will reflect on because there's a light there so this is really really good for example like in vent and garrison this is a good setting to have there's only certain spots on the map and especially like in the competitive map so this helps but it helps in those situations so you want to have this on on all so you can see those shadows it definitely is really good special effect shadow now that no need disabled weapon shadow disabled 
uh ray tracing gun shadows disabled 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 if you have these things on like i remember i had this on like medium or one of these on medium and my fps was like a 200 shot down all the way to like 120 like this destroys i mean i guess it looks game makes the game look better but it will destroy your, uh, your fps so this is another interesting topic with the post-processing effects dlss some people tried this and like this i honestly prefer because the way it works is you, you should either have one of these on i prefer anti-aliasing i think this one is better um so i kind of have this disabled i don't like to really mess with this but and i like to put my anti-aliasing on low now when it comes to this is also really good to understand low is smaa 1x you should be playing on low or high or smaa 2 t2x whatever it's called low or high those are the two you should be playing on i like low um i think if you put it high it makes the quality look a little better but also makes it kind of look sharp and like i don't know the edges look jagged and like it looks a little weird sometimes i guess it's a little different because it's supposed to be like sharper quality um but i like this on low again just having lower settings but you can do lower high um disabled motion blur of course disabled motion blur quality i mean i don't think it matters because it's disabled um subface <laughs> disabled disabled um i think i put this on 90 from default 80. i don't really know what this does i mean it's supposed to like help with performance and vram usage i don't think this really does much and now let's go to the audio so i do mess around with this usually my master I keep it 90 when i'm playing i usually have my sound effects at like somewhere between 80 to 90. um i i think 90 90 is fine i i don't like it having it too loud because then it, it just blows out my eardrums and i want to be able to you know think when i'm in game um dialogue i usually keep around 50 60 just so like i can hear the character talk sometimes uh, i i play on high boost so now there's different settings in here um i know some people play on super bass um i think it makes the game sound a little weird because it's like has that big bass to it and like in your headset sounds weird i like high boost i feel like if as long as i have my sound effects volume high i feel like i can hear footsteps i can hear slides pretty well uh, most of the time obviously they have to be close to me but i can hear it and then of course i got the hit marker enabled so i have my fps counter up top enabled so this is where you put that if you want to have your fps kind of see what your fps is rocking at i have my gpu temperature uh, something that's been an issue with my pc it gets a little overheated sometimes so i like to have this on just to kind of know what how your pc is reacting a lot of these things aren't really like you don't really need a lot of these things um the main two is just read these two right here um but i have all those just those two on and then all those off that really matter now the important part the controller controller obviously i play on pc controller the league is in pc is on pc controller so it's good to understand these settings and have the uh, some of the best settings here so i play on 6.6 six. um the, most pro players play on 6.6 6.6 six. Six, six is very very effective um i always say this and i'll say it again I, if you're gonna play on a sense i would recommend somewhere between five to seven i probably wouldn't go lower than that nor would i go higher than that you maybe could go eight but then you would play like 0.75 on that's like 6 ads but i just feel like it's od a little bit i think five to seven is perfect so i play 661 let me actually change that so for my high zoom i like to play on 1.10 that's usually what i'm rocking with for like snipers pretty much but in layout i rock tactical this is something i've been using for about seven eight years now and i love it and i just i've kept it since i play on flipped so i shoot with my l1 r1 um disable dynamic so now in response curve type obviously i made a whole video on this you I mean you guys could check it out if you want to get a more in-depth video but basically you can play on standard linear dynamic now standard in this game is not actually horrible if you remember mw modern warfare yeah that game uh dynamic was actually pretty broken in that game it gave you like a pretty significant boost in aim assist like you can actually feel it when you play the game and obviously dynamic does what dynamic does it as soon as you move your stick um like wide right wide left whatever it reacts very quickly and it does it so we have that on dynamic control vibration well i don't have any vibration in my controllers but i would disable that if you do target aim assist enabled target aim assist standard so now this is another thing i've talked about in past videos i like legacy a lot legacy is basically if you see what it says um it's like an alternate aim slow down your target it's very very similar to uh, standard it's essentially almost the same thing there's a very small difference but basically it's like a slight stronger pull ads m assist and enabled automatic behavior this is a, a, also another one here a good setting so when you jump near anything and you have this automatic like 
as soon as you jump near the thing, it's going to jump on it. And this will screw you in gunfights. In, in certain spots on the maps, in certain situations, this will screw you, especially if you're trying to jump shot, even like in certain random areas. So you want to have this on manual. You want to make sure this is on manual. Um, I've tried second press. It's just OD. It's too much. You're going to auto mantle stuff by, by having on manual every now and then. Once in a blue moon, it might still happen. But it should rarely ever happen. And it's definitely better than having it on second press. Aim down, hold, steady aim, barrier, hold, apply one, aim base. So this is the next big thing. For the stick layout, I do rock default. <clears throat> That's a lot of talking, man. I'm going to hover over in the video. 30 minutes, oh, we're about done. 12 minute video. So for the advance, now this is basically the dead zones. This is a very interesting area. You got to make sure you have these settings pretty right. Cause if not, it will throw you off and it will mess you up. So stick left stick, which is my, basically my, my sprint stick. Uh, I have it on zero. Why do I have it on zero? One. I mean, I guess you can kind of get stick drift for your left stick. It's just like harder to notice, but I have it on zero. So as soon as I move my stick, it's automatically reacting. When, when movement, you don't really need to be precise. You know what I mean? Like having like a slower, I guess, reaction to it. Or like if, how do I explain this? Like with your right stick, with your aim stick, you have to make minor adjustments while you're shooting at people, right? So if it, if it reacts to, if it's too sensitive, it, it can mess your shot up sometimes, especially with those really precise shots. But with your left stick, all you're doing is moving your character, which requires no really any precise movements. You just move wide left, wide right, left, right, diagonal. Like there's no really crazy minor movements you have to do. Therefore, I want to have my stick like as soon as I move it, it's very sensitive. It just moves. So that way my movement is the best it can be. So I like this on zero. I don't think there's any, I've never had six drift with my left stick. Like my character just moving by itself. But obviously if you're having that issue, you can up it to like one, two, three. Uh, the default is usually five. I mean, that's what's supposed to be. Um, but I like this on zero. You got to keep these two at 99. I, I think people have like messed with this a little bit and it's, it, it just messes your thing up pretty bad. So have it on 99, 99. Now my right stick default is five. Um, I, I played on three and four before it just the usually, like I said, the higher it is, the, the more like control you have over it in a sense where it, it like, it's, it's a little bit slower. It's a little bit stiffer, but like in terms of like aim and like shooting people, you want your shot to be a little bit precise. You want to be kind of stiff sometimes. So I obviously having this too high is bad because you're, you're going to be slow. If people sprint or across your screen, you might not be able to follow them because your, your stick is like slower or stiffer. So I think the default is good. Um, you can try going like three, four, but I probably wouldn't like, I would probably play, have this around three to five. And for the last thing in the last setting, you go to account and network and the server latency. I have it on widgets shown. This obviously shows in the top left corner, your, your latency to the, to the server, basically your ping. So obviously I'm host right now. So I'm pinging nine, eight, 10. Um, it's just good to know, like when you're playing pubs or matches or tournament, it's good to have an idea where the host is, you know, what you're connecting to is, are you lagging or are they lagging if you're pinging like absurdly high? So I always like to have that up there, even though it can mess with people's heads. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's little settings video. I know I went a little bit in depth. And I, do, I tend to talk a lot about, I mean, you know, I'm just passionate about Call of Duty. I'm passionate about informing you guys and giving you guys my knowledge or giving you guys my two cents and actually explaining things so you guys understand why I use certain things or why it is used. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. I have a bunch of tip videos and gameplay videos on my channel that you should check out. I'm sure you'll like them. And I also stream on twitch.tv slash apathy at least a couple times a week. So if you want to follow that or just tune in whenever you want. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.